Hi, I'm David Haxton, and we're in Boda, and I would like to show you the necessary steps in establishing a nursery. When you're first establishing your nursery, it's important to secure the land to be used for the nursery, and that can be done through contacting uh, the assemblyman or your counterpart in particular to provide land necessary for the nursery. Once the land is secured, then you move on to establishing the fence. And the fence is one of the most important items to have when you're establishing a nursery because without it, the goats and other animals uh, will destroy the nursery. So make sure that the fence is, is very secure. The other item that needs to be considered when constructing a nursery is also appropriate shading. Because the seedlings are sensitive to extreme sunlight, it is important to cut palm fronds so as to shade the nursery while you are growing the seedlings themselves. So, over here, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, a collection of seeds and we will take it and put them in the water. These seeds have since been dried from harvest and as you can see, once we put it in the water, some of them are floating and others are sinking to the bottom. Those that sink to the bottom are more viable for planting. And those that are sinking you will leave in the water for a period of two days. And by leaving them in the water for two days, it will help with the germination process. It softens the, the metacarp of the shell and uh, will encourage an early germination. Then you can acquire poly bags, which are of a certain size. You need a larger poly bag to accommodate the larger taproot. You now have seeds that are ready to be planted in the poly bags that you have recently just filled with soil. When planting the particular seeds, you must remember to keep it in the appropriate orientation on the nut where, where it connects with the fruit on the tree that should remain in the upward orientation. When it comes to planting it into the poly bag, you will keep that orientation and plant it anywhere from a half inch to one inch below the soil surface. So after you have planted the seeds into the soil, you should see uh, the germination within one week's time. Uh, after a period of six weeks, then you have, as can be seen here, a, a tree that is ready to be grafted. Now that I have shown you the necessary steps in establishing the nursery as well as planting the seeds, I would now like to show you the necessary steps to graft. So here we are at the first step. He's taking the razor blade and cutting off the top. Co. Co. Chua. All right. Now the second step that he's going to do is make a cut lengthwise down the stem, whereupon the scion will fit into. And I just wanted to show you some of the scions that we had picked. I went up to Winchy Agriculture Station and selected these scions with some of the uh, women workers up there. So uh, scion selection is a very important activity in the grafting business. When you get to the scion bank or where you want to pick your desired scion, first you look at the terminal bud. The terminal bud shouldn't have opened. If it opens, it becomes very difficult for uh, the uh, union to take, that the seedling and then the scion to take. Then also, you have to look at the 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 bats or the the internals. The internals will have to be um, even. If you have the internals to be very close, 
it means there has been some stress and you have to avoid it. You should have healthy science. The science should be free of disease. Otherwise, you are going to be multiplying diseases in your field. You see, this black spot shows that the, the scion is diseased. So you have to uh, reject it. After you have collected your scions, you need to protect them from desiccation. Um, if um, you hold them like that and the wind blows over it, it's going to dry up. So you put them in the newspaper like this, wrap them and then uh, moisten the newspaper. If you are to travel with it to very distant places, then you need, um, you need a jute sack to wrap it and then moisten the juice sack also. And that can allow you to use it after two or three days. The advantages in grafting as to seeding directly is one, the plants or the cashew will come into bearing earlier than the seedling. Two, you have true to type of the mother, which is the desired variety or the desired type on the new plant that you're going to get. The good scion. Well, from here I've selected a few scions that I thought would match up with the same diameter as the seedling. So the, f the next thing I want them to do is to cut off the end uh, so that it, it is uh, a clean cut on the end. And so now he's he's making the wedge shape on the scion which will fit into the seedling he's cutting both sides trying to make it fairly thin so it fits in easily he's doing quite well very good way out of you so now he'll pressure fit it into the the seedling and from there, he will take a tying rubber and wrap it around to join both scion and seedling to cement the union. This is extremely important. You have to make sure that the, the bond doesn't allow for any air or water to pass in, in between the joint because uh, th then it may spoil the union and the graft may not actually take place. So once we've secured the tie to join both scion and seedling, we have this cap that we cover the top. This is to help prevent the loss of moisture in the scion. If, if the scion itself dries out, then it will lead to scion mortality. With the cap, he allows a little space for growth up top. Like we spoke of the terminal bud, uh, there shouldn't be any growth, but to indicate that the the grafting has taken place, you will see within 15 days uh, growth at the terminal bud. So that's that's when we come back in 15 days, we'll know whether it was a successful graft or not when there is fresh growth at the terminal bud where there was not. And that's all there is to, to grafting is finished. Hi, I'm David. We're here in Boda, and I'm going to teach you how to cash craft you. <laughs> Bye, corn dog. <laughs> cash craft you.